Hi everyone. My name is Helen Rost. I will give a presentation about how you can do adjustment of photometric point cloud towards a LiDAR point cloud. Actually, I will cover three different topics. Uh, the first one is the one adjusting photo point cloud to LiDAR reference data. The second one is how you can do manual adjustment, uh, like a drag and drop towards any reference data. The third one is how you can do adjustment of photo point cloud to towards ground control points. All these tools are found in Tarascan main application and all these tools are used on loaded points. The photogrammetric point cloud I'm going to use is an example data set from a drone project in the city of Östersund, which is the north of Sweden. It's positioned, the drone was positioned with RTK GNSS and the Agisoft software was used to produce the photogrammetric dense point cloud. The LiDAR points used comes from the National LiDAR project in Sweden. It has about one point per square meter and the accuracy is about five centimeters on well-defined surfaces and the, this data is also free to download at the Swedish Na National Land Survey's homepage. Um, it's an ongoing project and about one third of Sweden is covered at the moment. <clears throat> So the first example is I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how you can adjust a photogrammetric point cloud to a LiDAR reference point cloud using a three-dimensional transformation and if you wish also a rubbish sheet fit. I will start a video and talking you through it. So the first step would be to just open the photo point cloud in the Terrascan main window. So here's the photo point cloud and it has some colors and you can see it's in three dimensions when I am rotating the, the point cloud. To adjust this to the uh, LiDAR reference point cloud, I would like to do some ground classification because the ground is a good solid continuous surface which is well suited for, for uh, matching. So I will do the ground classification by using the Terrascan macro and I will do some manual editing. When I do that manual editing I will turn on the shaded surface display mode because that is easier for me to see where I have gross errors in the ground classification and do some quite simple steps for the editing to make sure that I don't have too many gross errors in the ground classification. So when I'm done, I want to load the LiDAR reference data um, and uh, I don't want to load all LiDAR data. I make a fence around this area and load only LiDAR data inside the fence. And now I make sure when I load the LiDAR data that I read the, the LiDAR data as a reference point and they will be treated treat it separately from the the photo point cloud. So the photo point cloud was, was read by using read points and now 
the LIDAR point cloud is, you, is read by using read reference points. So it's a difference how they are treated in Terascan. So I have a number of LAS files covering Östersund, but I want to make sure that I only open the area that overlaps this 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 uh, photo point cloud. So I will choose the inside fans only when I open the LiDAR data. And now you can see to the right how they fit. You can see there's an offset in elevation. You can see the difference in the two point clouds. The LiDAR point clouds has a, has a wider uh, vegetation here, representation of the vegetation. It also has the, the roof here in the LiDAR data while the roof is not existing in, in the photo point cloud. And this is probably because it's not it's bad texture on this roof, so it could not do the matching on the roof. But we can see there there is an offset between the two data sets, and we want to adjust the photo point cloud to towards the lidar data. So in Tarascan, there is a tool called Fit to Reference, which we are going to use. So here we can choose which class to use in the calculation. We will use the ground class. We will do shift and rotation of the photo point cloud. And we, can, we put some maximum values for the shifts and rotations. I choose to use only every 20th point uh, as an uh, observation. And the solution criteria here is put to one centimeter. That means that uh, when, when the improvement is less than one centimeter, then the, it will stop I iterating. And the center of rotation I will choose as the center point of the point cloud. I will not do the rubbish sheet fit. I want to do that as a second step. So I will start by using the shift and rotation. So here we can see uh, output of the of the uh, shift and rotation. So you can see the magnitude of the shift, the magnitude of rotation, the mismatch before and after doing the 3D transformation. You could save this as a text file, but I will not do this here. And now I want to look at the result. So I will make a few cross sections to see how well the photo point cloud fits to the LiDAR point cloud. So I will make a few cross sections and on different locations in different uh, directions <clears throat> and you can see that they fit quite well. <clears throat> so now I can continue by doing fit to reference, but in this case I will only do a rubbish sheet fit because I have, I have already made the the 3D transformation fit and uh, when I do the rubbish sheet fit I tell the software the density of the grid of the rubbish sheet fit 
So in this case it will calculate an offset in each 10 meter grid step uh, and this uh, 10 meter grid um, correction will be used to, to interpolate in between these grid points and uh, you will apply on all data. So now you can see the result from the rubbish sheet fit. You can see the average magnitude of all grid point corrections are is about two and a half centimeters. The average correction is around zero, and that is natural because we made a 3D transformation already. Uh, the maximum correction was nine plus 19 centimeters and the minimum was minus 8 centimeters. You could save this as a text file, but I will not do that. Now I would like to save the photo point cloud. So I would do save points as. And when I do that, only the photo point cloud is saved and not the reference point cloud. So here is one thing where the reference point cloud is treated se separately from the, the original point cloud. So after saving I can close all points and then I load save the uh, file and you will see in this case that the the lidar reference points are not in this file so this holds only the original photo point cloud and not the reference points so now we came to example number two here I will show you some manual adjustment how you can do how you can move a point cloud to approximately the same the, the correct position using manual tools like drag and drop. So I will run this video, talk you through it. So in this case the reference data is an orthophoto. Uh, this could of course be of course be something else. It could be point cloud or it could be uh, raster map or vector map data set. Then I will read the photo point cloud and in this case it's moved to a totally different position. So I have no clue about how far away it is or what the coordinate system is. It's all already been all also been rotated. So I want to move this point cloud to the position of the Earth photo. And for that I'm going to use the Terrascan tool translate and the tool rotate. So I will start by moving the point cloud with the tool translate. So I will go to line translate and then I choose one corner of this building as a reference point and then I go to the orthophoto and find the same reference point and click and then the point cloud is moved to that position. So now the two datasets overlap. Now I would like, like to make a rotation. And uh, just to make things more clear, I want to change the display mode to show you that there is a different rotation between the the also photo and the point cloud. 
So now what I will do rotate and then I will click one of the points as a center center of rotation and then one of the corners of the buildings as as uh, one of the points to to rotate. So I will choose another corner of the building and then the point cloud is rotated to fit the ortho photo. So if I do this more several times, of course I will get a better position. You can choose also to do this in all three dimensions if you like. So now we came to the we come to the last example is how you can g-reference the photometric point cloud using control points. Also here I want to run a video. I will load the photometric point cloud. The point cloud has only one class, class number zero. And this was maybe a little bit fast. I used a tool in Terrascan called Fit Using Targets. In here, I want to measure the the, the targets manually. But you could also do an automatic search of defined painted targets or uh, balls, which which has a certain uh, diameter. But that is more for maybe a handheld lighter equipment or similar where you have more distinct targets. In this case, we have some painted targets on the ground and I'm going to measure them manually in the point cloud. So here's my list and I want to zoom in to the targets and click at the position. And this is the source, which is the LiDAR or the point photo point cloud coordinate is, is referred to as source and the ground control point coordinates are, are referred to as target. So when I do the measurement I get a source x, y, z and here you can see the set uh, coordinate is zero. So I have to turn on, I will remove this and then I will turn on mouse point adjustment where I do adjustment of elevation towards class number zero. So I say that okay any point the closest point the the point closest to the mouse position will give you the elevation the set coordinate so when i click here now you see that the source get a z coordinate of of 320 meters which comes from the the point cloud so I will do the measurement of all these five targets I have in the in the area. And I can do this in any order. So now I would like to pair these measurements with some ground control target coordinates. And in this case I'm going to read a target XYZ file which holds the control point coordinates.
and the software automatically matches the my measurement with the target coordinates and one of the target numbers. So the first point I measured was uh, paired with target number one, the second one with target number five, and so on. And the residual you see at the end, the three last columns are the residuals, that, that is the residuals after the 3D transformation. So that will give you an indication if, if these sources and targets have been paired correctly or not. If the residuals are small, then the pairing has been successful. You could also enter the target coordinates by snapping to any object in the design file. Now I could choose to save the 3D transformation to a Terrascan setting file and name it whatever name I want to have. That holds the origin, the translation and the rotation. Or I could also save the rubbish sheet file, which will be a delta easting, delta northing, delta elevation file. Or I can just apply the, the corrections directly. I can choose to do only the translate and rotate, or I can also combine it with the rubbish sheet fit. I could choose to apply it on loaded points, and if I have trajectories, I could also include those. So before doing this, I can show you that the mi where you have the mismatch between control and target, or source and target. So I turn on the ground control points, which I have in the design file, and I can also show you the locations of the source measurement and the target coordinates. So when I do apply, these should be the point cloud should be moved to fit the ground control points. And now you can see that there's a perfect match between the sources and the targets in all five positions. So, as a summary, um, there exists a diversity of tools for moving and geometrically adjusting point clouds in Terrascan. There's a mixture of manual, semi-automatic, automatic tools, and the reference data may be ground control points, it may be reference point cloud, it may be orthophoto, an elevation model, it could be raster map data, it could be vector data map data. So you have many different options. Uh, you could also do additional adjustments in Termatch, but that requires trajectory data and time tags on, on the points. So thank you for your attention. I hope to see you again.